Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson again, Human Relations Strategies for Success. Uh, we're talking about human relations in a world of diversity, chapter 14. You're almost there. All you have left is chapter 15 and chapter 16 after this. Time goes by so, so fast. All right. So, our learning objectives. Uh, describe, how, describe how human relations are effective uh, when they are part of a diverse society, such as ours here in Southern California. Uh, explain how prejudice attitudes uh, pose a challenge to uh, human relations. Identify the origins of prejudice. Uh, list types of discrimination, which is an actual action. Prejudice isn't an action, it's just uh, a way somebody feels. Uh, define sexual harassment. Uh, describes the connections uh, between prejudice, discrimination, and self-esteem. And give examples of how to decrease prejudice. In a diverse society, uh, you have a greater visibility at the workplace for people with disabilities and different religious beliefs, right? So I, I, I was surprised to find out when I went on a, a visit to another one of our locations, not my current company, but two companies uh, prior, and uh, they had a very diverse uh, group in Irving, Texas. Uh, you know, when I was first going to Texas, I was thinking of a uh, Hoss Cartwright, uh, but it was a very, very diverse uh, group, uh, a lot of different religious uh, beliefs, and uh, they they sort of had had them all together and working well in a in a great working environment. So it was a um, you know a lesson for me not to uh, have my expectations set a certain way because that may not be the case. Uh, companies are encouraging uh, diversity uh, by offering uh, diversity training programs for employees, uh, hiring diversity officers as part of the administrative team, and that is a job and it's a good job, and uh, working with suppliers who have similar policies. Stereotypes. Uh, so one, uh, one's thoughts or beliefs about specific groups of people, it may be positive, negative, or could be neutral. Uh, so, uh, for example, and I'll give you guys a funny one, uh, I thought that all African Americans could play basketball until I played against a, a team, and I won't mention the high school because some of you guys may be alumni from there, and they were just terrible. And I said, man, maybe they're sick. Or maybe they don't feel well today. But they really just couldn't play basketball, and that was just the fact of the matter that everybody of any certain race can't play a certain sport. Uh, oversimplified, exaggerated, uh, and or overgeneralized. Uh, fail to recognize individual characteristics and affect hiring, promotions, and job evaluations at the workplace. So if you have these wrong misconceptions and ideals about people and their racial and ethnic uh, uh, background, then you're going to make wrong decisions in regards to hiring them, possibly firing them, and uh, uh, promoting or not promoting them. Uh, prejudice is how one feels as a result of the stereotypes uh, one believes in. So bias is judging people uh, before knowing them, uh, basing the judgment only on their uh, membership of a group or category of people. It can be negative or positive. So let's just say that I, um, uh, I like the Dodgers and you also like the Dodgers. Then uh, I'm going to probably say, hey, I, I want to uh, hire this person because I like the fact that they also like the Dodgers. But it could be that you're an Angels fan, and then maybe I say, oh, you know what, I don't like the fact that this individual is an Angels fan, so I'm not going to hire that individual. So there's certain biases, and, and people try and you know pretend like that they don't have any biases at all, but people definitely uh, have biases. Uh, you, you typically will hire somebody who's just more like you because you have more in common, more things to talk about, it's just an easier fit. Uh, it undermines human relations and affects productivity, and it's disruptive in nature, and it actually lowers morale. Uh, discrimination, acting or intending to act on a, a, a prejudicial uh, attitude. Uh, so results in institutional prejudice. Uh, institutional prejudice is caused by workplace policies that unintentionally uh, exclude members of specific groups or treat them differently. So for instance, uh, I'll give you guys a good example. Um, <clears throat> if you want to, in a legal way, uh, kind of discriminate or get only a certain group of people uh, in, a, in a company, you could say, hey, we're going to have a policy where we'll give you guys uh, $1,000 if you uh, refer somebody to the company. And typically, people are friends with their same ethnicity. So when you refer someone, it's Demetrius Wilson. Then I refer Joe Smo, who I went to college with, and we're the same uh, gender with the same uh, ethnicity. And then another position comes open, and then the two of us refer someone else. And that's just kind of how it works. 
Uh, Civil Rights Act of 1964, uh, it's illegal to discriminate against uh, race, color, religion, sex, or, or national origin. Uh, one thing that may not uh, be in here, uh, before, prior to, I think, 1972 or 78, uh, you could ask a woman if she intended on getting pregnant, which is obviously a big invasion of privacy and something that they definitely changed. Uh, equal, opportunity, uh, equal Employment Opportunity Commission, a uh, federal agency that monitors the laws uh, of the amended Civil Rights Act of 1972. So here in uh, figure 14.2, you see the origins of prejudice. So social, uh, status, self-esteem, us versus them, in a group out, out of the group, uh, cognitive, uh, thinking, reasoning, uh, categorize, categorization, uh, <clears throat> and putting people into boxes, and emotional, uh, the right way, uh, habit, uh, ethnocentrism, and, uh, and competition. So uh, we'll talk about a few of those, uh, such as ethnocentrism, uh, believing that, uh, you know, your uh, racial group is, is better than, than that of, of others. Uh, so cognitive categorization. Um, mind quickly sorts information into categories uh, to function efficiently, right? And it works kind of like a computer. Our brain is a supercomputer. Uh, ethnocentrism is a belief that one's ethnic group is more normal than others. Uh, emotional source of prejudice, uh, people's uh, gut level feeling about uh, how right their group is and how wrong they think the other groups are. Uh, and that's one, um, uh, one thing I always uh, get in a debate with some of my friends about and I, I kind of explain it to them. I said, uh, you know, boxing. Uh, they, they thought that, you know, MMA, MMA, mixed martial arts would be so much more popular uh, because it appeals to the younger crowd. The crowd but the thing is, is that uh, in, in mixed martial arts, you don't really have the like a racial or ethnic divide. Uh, in boxing, you can still vote for or root for your countrymen and come out and wave your flag and everything. And that's why people who don't really know anything about boxing, they can still get excited about it because they're rooting for the guy that's going to be from their country. Uh, primary forms of discrimination. Uh, discrimination, three problems, issues, uh, issues to consider, uh, racist. Acceptance of minorities, assimilation versus separation, educational opportunities, cultural biases, hiring and recruitment po uh, policies, uh, economic uh, power struggles, uh, resources, uh, resentment, uh, competition for limited opportunities, and also uh, male chauvinism. Uh, sexist, uh, gender roles, uh, and actual male chauvinism as well will go under sexist. Um, gender roles, wage discrepancies, right? So I'll, I'll have a video for you guys that shows the wage discrepancy uh, between men and women. Uh, educational opportunities and tradition versus innovation. So what types of discrimination are there? There's uh, racism, which is prejudice and uh, discrimination based on race. There's economic prejudice, uh, prejudice and discrimination toward people who are poor and, or wealthier than one is, right? So, you know, I've got a lot of money, you don't have a lot, then I'm prejudiced towards you. Or you don't have you don't have a lot of money and I have a lot and you're prejudiced towards me. A sexism, a prejudice, and discrimination based on uh, gender. Uh, along those same lines, uh, ageism, uh, that's when uh, there's a discrimination and prejudice in regards to how old someone is. So how to tell a business man from a businesswoman, and this is a, a a really good exercise so gender prejudice in the business world so a man a businessman is aggressive a businesswoman is pushy a businessman is careful about details a businesswoman is picky a businessman loses his temper because he is so involved in the job a businesswoman is bitchy a businessman is depressed or hung over so everyone tiptoes past his office uh, a businesswoman is uh, moody, uh, so it appears to be her time of the month. A businessman follows through. Uh, a businesswoman uh, doesn't know when to quit. A businessman is, man is firm. A businesswoman is stubborn. A businessman makes wise judgments. A businesswoman reveals her prejudices. A businessman, uh, he's a man of the world. A businesswoman, she's been around. A businessman, he uh, isn't afraid to say what, what he thinks. A businesswoman, she's outspoken and opinionated. A businessman, he exercises authority. A uh, businesswoman, she's a tyrant. A businessman, he's discreet. A businesswoman, she's secretive. A businessman, he's a stern taskmaster. A businesswoman, she's uh, difficult to work for. Now, obviously, I don't believe uh, these things and these uh, you know stereotypes, uh, but you can see how people and some people that you talk to, some people that you know, would believe that this is actually the truth. 
uh, overweight people, uh, emphasis on dieting and fitness have made them uh, targets of prejudice. And unfortunately, that's definitely the case. And, uh, you know, so you can look back at certain things and say, so how many overweight CEOs of companies do you see? How many shorter uh, CEOs of companies do you see? You know, I, I put you to task to, to look that up and see. And when I say uh, uh, CEO of a company, that's somebody who's elected, somebody who who's put into that position. I'm not talking about somebody who owns a company because they came up with a great idea. I'm talking about a person who was, was elected. There's a board of directors and everything. And they're saying, hey, you know, we want this person to be our CEO. Uh, their court cases have ruled against this prejudice and uh, belief exists that they are to blame for high health care costs. Right. And, you know, it, 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 it does happen because, uh, like I said, I had an office in Orange and one in Irving, Texas, and they made the office in Irving, Texas, get on a different health plan because uh, a good portion of them were overweight. Uh, homosexuals. So controversies is homosexuality, a, a freely chosen lifestyle or genetically caused. Right. People always have these you know, questions of which one is it uh, determines uh, if it should be a protected category or not. Uh, should their life partners receive the same employment benefits as legally married married spouses, right? So you'll see, uh, you know, dependents uh, uh, on there, and it doesn't matter whether they're uh, male or female uh, dependent or same sex, uh, that they, they get the same type of uh, benefits. Uh, policies and laws forbid discrimination based on sexual orientation uh, or sexual preference. <clears throat> Elderly. The Age Discrimination uh, in Employment Act, uh, ADA, ADEA protects employees and job applicants from a discrimination based on age right so it's, it's even if you don't have all your your dates and everything on there I can pretty much look at someone's resume and, and understand it and say okay this person is this age um, as I spoke about earlier ageism uh, that's a prejudice and discrimination toward uh, toward older people and you'd be amazed to know that uh, I was actually uh, accused of ageism uh, we had to make a decision in regards to who we were going to hire out of 50 people. I hired eight, and uh, two of those people were, were over uh, or close to 50. And one lady, she was close to that age as well, and she said because of my age, they didn't hire me. And the truth was is that I didn't hire her because of her behavior, and she just wasn't as good as the others. But I had to come in with proof as to uh, their auditing and to say, okay, this person's better because of this and show that to the to the human resources department in order to to let them know that uh, that I made the correct and the and the right decision so uh, even when you do the right thing you can end up running into a, a situation and where that when that may occur uh, people with disabilities so rehabilitation act of uh, 1973 uh, provided ambiguous uh, definitions of handicap and disabled uh, Americans with uh, Disabilities Act or ADA of 1990, so it prohibits discrimination in areas of employment, public transportation, telecommunication, or other privately owned services to the public. Uh, benefits and opportunities uh, must be of the same quality uh, as those uh, offered to everyone else. Uh, one company I've been at really good, right in the front, they had like a, a wheelchair lift uh, because they had these stairs in it. So somebody could just go roll in there and it'll lift them up and they can go right into the door. So I, I really like that. Uh, myths about hiring people with disabilities. Uh, disabled people are unreliable. Uh, disabled people can't do very many jobs. And disabled people uh, will make other employees feel uncomfortable. And that's all all very, very untrue. I've seen people with disabilities that do a great job. Uh, some, some that do a much better job than the people who don't have disabilities. Uh, religious groups, uh, members or objects of discrimination at work and social circles, uh, Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 uh, forbids discrimination against members of any religion. Uh, employers are required to accommodate employees who need to practice religion beliefs at work. So some of you may not understand, well, what type of religious beliefs would you need to practice at work? So, for instance, if you're Muslim, uh, you know, you might need to, pry, uh, to pray uh, a certain amount of times. Uh, at company that I was at, they actually provided a quiet room where you could actually go in there and uh, and pray. So it was, it was really good, very diverse uh, company, and I really liked it. Uh, pregnant women asking job applicants uh, questions pertaining to plans for pregnancy and child rearing are illegal, uh, affects hiring decision, and affects uh, applicants' chances of employment and advancement. Uh, so sexual harassment, uh, want you to make sure that you pay close attention to that 
uh, slide and I'll, I'll just leave it here so you can read it and, and, and review the other slides that I didn't get a chance to cover. Uh, you know, as always, have a good day, a great week, uh, read your chapter, take your quiz, and, uh, you know, be prepared for your tests and class has almost come to an end.